legitimise the children again? Yes, it could have done, and of course it was to do so subsequently under Henry VII. So as soon as Henry VII deposed Richard at Bosworth, he reversed the bastard. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I mean, please, Your Lordship. Let me deal with the pre-contract first of all, if I may, please. Uh, there is no doubt that if, in fact, there had been a pre-contract, it presented valid grounds for invalidating the marriage between Edward uh, and Elizabeth Woodville. If? Yes. Uh, and it would provide valid grounds for passing over the prince's succession. Not necessarily. Yes, if it could be established. <coughs> well, it would have been quite possible, in fact, for Parliament to have simply declare... That, that I appreciate. The, it was a, he was a true king. Parliament could, in fact, decide, although the levels of their... or the areas of their competence were not exactly defined by that time in medieval uh, period that we're dealing with, Subsequently, it did in fact rule upon uh, royal matrimony, did it not? It ruled on certain issues of royal matrimony after the break with Rome. Edward IV was a man who was a known philanderer, to use a polite term. Mm -hmm. uh, Croyland reported him as indulging his passions and his desires too intemperately. Even Mancini said, with his access to inside information, that he was licentious in the extreme. Yes, he was. And so it was a claim which could be believed of Edward. Not really. I think a licentious could. man like that is likely to get his way without having to uh, make up this, you know, to go through the business of a pre-contract. This was a lady, the story went, who was resisting his blandishments, who would not succumb to him. It was said so keen was he to procure her that he even broke off a hunting trip, which he would not, Henry the Fo Edward the Fourth, ordinarily do. That would have been the ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a wild good... beast escaped on yes. this occasion. Several Maybe stories like course. that were told about Edward the Fourth. In fact, he did not attempt after the death of Eleanor Butler who died in a nunnery in, I think, Norwich? I'm not sure where he died. She died. 1468. That's right. Uh, to marry the Queen, Elizabeth Woodville, in public? No. Right. I don't think he... It's quite understandable, that. After all, what we're supposed to understand is this is a highly secret. The whole Precisely thing is secret. Precisely so. Only Eleanor Butler and this um, Robert Stillington are supposed to have known. Uh, I'm not sure about, about, about you, Mr Dillon, but I would probably, having gone through something like this with another lady, would have preferred to keep it quiet and um, not troubled my wife. Exactly the, so. The details. If he was to broadcast it, he would have been sowing seeds of discontent there would have been a section of the public who would never have accepted whatever was said to have been the position. Would have been opening a can of worms. But the thing, in fact, was a tissue of lies. This Let's is quite understand. Clear. It's a tissue of lies. Let's understand, if you please, because thereafter, Henry VII took great pains to suppress the story after 1485. Can I examine the evidence with you briefly? What happened in 1485? Yes. Right. Because it implied... You say the pre-contract story is a tissue of lies. Oh, yes, everyone believed it at the time. I mean, everyone knew it was a tissue of lies. They didn't believe the story. They... Well, that depends but upon... Not apparently the Bishop of Stilly. No, this bad, wicked Bishop, as Commune called him. Oh, dear, we are getting into deep... I respectfully <laughs> suggest that he's not a bad or a wicked Bishop mm. at all, and that it, it is necessary for one, if one's going to take a fair and balanced view, to examine the evidence which is available. I have not much time. May I try and examine some of it very quickly, please? Well, as long in as In the we... titulus regius, which mm -hmm. you pointed out to the jury, was the Act of Parliament <coughs> confirming Richard's coronation, which referred to the illegitimacy and the reason for the illegitimacy. Upon Henry VII's uh, accession, he ordered that all copies be destroyed under pain of heavy punishment, so that, and I quote, all things said and remembered in the said bill and act, therefore, may be forever out of remembrance and also forgot. Yes, yeah, so it was such a gross slander against his queen. Uh, I am not uh, uh, criticising his act. Or libel, I should say. I am not. examining it with the jury. 
with your assistance. At the same time, the justices of the Exchequer Division, that's to say judges of the country appointed by uh, the King, together with the Lords in Parliament, considered the titulus regis, considered the pre-contract, and came to the conclusion that the Bishop of Bath, that is Bishop Stillington, made the bill. In other words, he was responsible for providing the information which gave the grounds for the bill, which gave valid grounds, if they existed, for Richard to ascend the throne. They were. The Lords intended to summon Stillington before them so that they could examine him. That would have provided a valid occasion, a proper occasion, upon which Stillington's claim in relation to the pre-contract could have been explored, whether satisfactorily or not, and from which one could have possibly learned whether, in fact, as you say, the pre-contract story was a tissue of lies, was in fact the truth. Didn't it? Uh, it's a, a, a very neat statement. Uh, the only problem, I, as I see it, is why, oh why, was this not done in June 1483? Because... When it really mattered. Because I'm asking about Richard the, uh, Henry the Seventh. you'll understand. The examination did not take place because Henry the Seventh refused, saying that he, the king, had pardoned Bishop Stillington. And yet, will you follow me? <clears throat> One of the first warrants issued after Bosworth and the uh, victory there of Henry VII was to arrest the bishop. And the bishop was, in fact, arrested in York mm -hmm. within five days of the Battle of Bosworth. Mm -hmm. It means, does it not? Uh, let me put this as low as I can. <laughs> that on one view, Henry VII himself prevented, or at any rate, avoided investigation into the claim about the pre-contract. Does it not? Carry on. That's the question. Ah, well, um, what I think we've got, we've got to bear in mind about this is that Henry... I mean, you've thrown in so many different things, it's very difficult to know where I have start stated to you a number of facts. Yes, so. <laughs> interpretations of the past, if I may say so. But, in fact, I think we've got to bear in mind that Henry, in 1485, was endeavouring to start his reign on a fresh start, a clean slate. He wished to, as his early statements made absolutely clear, he wished to get all the old quarrels and disputes between his subjects forgotten and put behind. And I think this is... This is a piece with this policy, to start straight away by saying, right, we won't go over all this the stuff again. The fact is that no one believed it. He's passed an Act of Parliament which um, quite simply reversed it without discussing it in detail, uh, married the uh, Elizabeth of York, who became his queen, and then continued to start afresh. There was no need, in fact. Well, I must go on to other matters anxious though I would be to comment upon well, we your can answer. It uh, neither Mancini nor Croyland uh, identify Richard as being responsible for the deaths of the princes. It's true. Neither say directly he killed them. Croyland simply says a rumour was spread that the sons of Edward had died a violent death, but it was uncertain how. In other passages in Croyland, and indeed in Mancini, they do not hesitate to point the finger at Richard or whoever else they think might have been responsible. What they do is they most, most clearly state that Richard III deposed his, his nephew, Edward V. I, I'm, I'm and not they, they remain about... silent on, on the question. <clears throat> this trial is not directed to whether there was a, a usurpation, but whether there was a murder. Ah, but a usurpation therefore gave the reason for a murder. Well, we'll see about that in a moment or two with another witness, alas. Much though I'm enjoying facing you across this courtroom. <laughs>